So imagine you're thinking of buying an EV, giving up fossil fuels, going from the pump to the plug. But you've heard all kinds of things in the media that EV batteries don't last very long and when they need replacing they're going to cost you an arm and a leg, you know, 20,000 pounds or whatever. Well, leave that cost thing aside at the moment. Because the other day I was thinking about this and I googled how long do EV batteries last? Now there's a whole load of responses that you get, uh, but one of the responses I got was from um, a website called EV Lithium and it's got all kinds of good stuff in there about nickel manganese cobalt batteries, LFP batteries, comparing them. And then there's a little paragraph and it just says cycle life. In terms of durability, LFP batteries are the clear winners. Fair enough. NMC batteries typically last for about 800 cycles, which is sufficient for most high power applications. However, LFP batteries can easily surpass 3000 cycles and with proper care, some can even reach up to 6,000 cycles. Okay, so, I mean, they weren't talking at, at this point about applications, but it, uh, they do go then to talk about electric vehicles. And of course, most Western manufacturers are still using NMC batteries. And I'm thinking 800 cycles. I mean, in 2020, which was the first full year of me owning the Kia e Nero, I did the tedious task of um, actually recording every time I plugged in. I made a note of the percentage uh, of charge when I plugged in and the percentage of charge when I unplugged and just uh, wrote that down on a spreadsheet with the date beside it. And I think in that year I plugged in 114 times. Now on that basis, uh, 114 times a year, um, I, I would now be getting close to the 800 cycles that's mentioned in that website EV Lithium, which in every other way seems to give very good information. Now you can look at other websites, you can Google the same subject, and then you'll get a completely different answer. So on a website called Midtronics, most electric vehicle batteries have an estimated 1500 to 2000 charge cycles. Um, and of course, what they're talking about are full charge cycles. So we're not talking about a 20 to 80% charge or a 30 to 70% charge. We're talking 1,500 to 2,000 full charge down, back down to zero again. And it seems that obviously the narrower range of charging you do, the more cycles you get. Now, I changed this year the way I charge my car. Uh, we used to have an old electromechanical meter um, that when the solar was producing more power than I needed, it pushed the meter backwards. So I just used to plug the car in and get it to the level I wanted at, at any time of day or night, knowing that I'd gain a bit back during the daytime when the solar pushed the meter back. So I knew that all the power my solar panels were producing, I was using. That's not the case anymore because in March, they upgraded us to um, a smart meter. And now obviously it doesn't run backwards when I'm overproducing on solar. So what I've tended to do, especially through the summer, um, around about lunchtime, my solar panels start producing the most they're ever going to produce, which isn't enough to charge the car. I mean, just on the granny cable, the car maxes out at 2.2 kilowatts. Um, that's what it pulls consistently. Um, and my solar panels, even on a bright sunny day, are only producing about between one and a half and 1.8 kilowatts. 
Um, but I want to use what they do produce. So I plug the car in at those points. So what we've been doing is we've been sort of, say the car's at 50% charge, I'll go to 60 and then use it a bit and go down to 55 and then go up to 65. So I'm just putting sometimes just two or 3% um, little micro charges, if you like. So I'm plugging in, gosh, about three or four times as often as I used to. Um, and of course, this begs the question, is this going to uh, affect um, the, the life of the battery? Well, I, I've, so I've done 130,000 kilometers now, um, six and a half years. Um, I'm seeing no loss of range at all when I charge to 100%. Um, but I mean, for example, is, is a 20% charge, say going from 30 to 50, uh, worth five full 100% uh, charges? I don't know. Um, they say it's good to um, charge the battery to 100% every so often because it gives the battery management system a chance to look at all the cell voltages to see what they are at 100%. And then if there's any weak cells, then they can raise slightly the voltage that you need to reach an available battery of, in the case of the Enero, 64 kilowatt hours. Now we know there's a buffer um, there that the battery management system never allows allows the cells to reach full voltage, full theoretical maximum voltage, and it never allows the uh, cells to go down to zero volts. Now, I've only ever once in the life of the car explored the bottom 10% of the battery, and that was on my way home from uh, the UK, and I knew I was going to get home and be able to plug in. And I think I got as low as 7 or 8%. And I've never been below 10%. I, th I think maybe one other time I got to 9%. But most of the time, I don't even go below 20%. So I'm constantly charging in this sort of narrow range. And say even more so now that um, we don't have the old electromechanical meter. But just getting back to someone who is thinking about you know going for an EV um, there's so much misinformation about even on quite serious websites and of course um, the site I've looked at uh, where it says 800 cycles which is nonsense I mean even four or five years ago when I you know well, longer than that when I was looking at buying an EV the general consensus was somewhere between 1,000 and 1,500 full charge and discharge cycles. And then, of course, what this article doesn't mention, it, it, because it says it should last at least 800 cycles, that gives the impression that after a certain number of cycles, it's not usable, a bit like a foam battery. Well, of course, that's not the case at all. It declines and you know, my car will decline, the battery capacity will decline over time, not just with the cycles, but with the calendar aging as well. But, um, you know, there's this impression that it's like a drop down, drop dead cutoff point at which I'm going to have to spend a lot of money replacing this battery. And of course, that's not the case at all. And I, what I think is more likely to happen is the battery will degrade and by 15 years, it may only have 75 or 80% of its capacity. But, uh, you know, a 15 year old car is typically bought as a second car run around or, um, you know, someone who doesn't rely on their car quite so much or expect it to do long journeys and you'll be picking this car up for a couple of thousand pounds or whatever, um, maybe even lower. And you're going to have a very reliable runaround, far more reliable than a 15 year old petrol car with, I don't know, 150,000 miles on the clock that's going to need a new starter motor, fuel pump, water pump, 
gearbox, blah, blah, blah. You know, we know the story if we're fully educated on the world of EVs. But unfortunately, that's not what it looks like if you're standing outside of that world, running a petrol or diesel car, looking in and wondering if you should make that move. So anyway, it's Key e Nero Diaries. I'm not going to insult you by asking you to like and subscribe. If you feel like doing that, you will. And if you don't, you won't. Anyway, thanks for watching. Until the next time.